Hey everyone, it's Tim Hinton from Marching Arts Education. I'm here talking with Barry Morgan. Barry, how are you? Great, how are you, Tim? I'm doing great. So you might, everybody watching, you might be interested in what is a contest director? What does that person do? How does, what's their job? We're gonna find out from Barry today. But first, Barry, um, I think a lot of people will know who you are, of course, but will you introduce yourself to anybody that might not know? Well, my name is Barry Morgan and I'm the uh, Solicitor General of Cobb County, Georgia. Uh, but prior to going to law school and, and um, and becoming a prosecutor, I, um, I was a high school band director in Cobb County for 12 years, uh, from the late 70s to the early 1980s. And um, along the way, after um, I had children uh, and they got involved in the band world and we came back to the, to the BOA world, I'd had some uh, involvement with it during my time as a band director but um, got more involved in it uh, when my older son was a uh, student at Kennesaw Mountain High School during some of their great runs in the, um, in the early 2000s. And then my younger son uh, was in the Alatoona High School Band program. We didn't move, but they just created a brand new school uh, in, the, uh, in 2010, 2011, uh, that time frame. That's great. So that's those programs with David Starnes that was such a wonderful, how, how lucky that was. I, I just back up for a minute and ask you, what was your instrument? I, I'm a trumpet player. I still do play a little bit, uh, a couple of times a year at church. Uh, as a matter of fact, my, uh, my mentor, uh, who I student taught with and really got me involved with then marching bands of America in 1976, um, Dan Martin and his brother, Freddie Martin, sort of uh, introduced me to this world, but um, uh, Dan was also the choir director at our church, and so I played trumpet a couple of years, uh, a couple of times a year. And interestingly enough, now David's D Dan has retired from that job, and David Starnes has taken over that role. So I'll have my first church gig with him in cri at Christmas time this year at the church. Oh, that's fantastic! I love that you're still playing, and that's thank you for sharing that history. Of course. Dan and Freddie Martin are legendary in our activity, so that you have a lot of really interesting connections already. So um, contest director, I think a lot of people don't know what that is. Uh, let's talk about that and your role of doing that. Well, contest director, I, I sort of look at as like a fireman. Uh, you're there to put out fires that occur at the time and make sure that the experience that the students and the uh, directors have is seamless. Um, you know, I'll give you an example. Well, let me back up. The contest director uh, is responsible for the overall uh, run of the show. Um, the uh, Bands of America Music for All has a, um, an event manager who is on staff uh, who's responsible for organizing everything, but uh, my role as contest director is to make sure that all of those parts are moving together. So out in the parking lot to make sure that uh, everyone's coming in safely into the parking lot with the buses and trucks. Band check-in, I try to go to band check-in uh, early on to, to just greet the directors as they're coming in, try to help them relax. Then I'll move from there and go to the warm-up area to check in to make sure that their um, things are going smoothly there for them. Try to check in on the, uh, the, the shows going on in the stadium. Um, have the opportunity, uh, which is really the fun part, to give out awards during both the prelims and the finals uh, that night, and, uh, and just make sure that all the parts are working together uh, as they should so that the experience that the students and directors get is positively life-changing. So that's really interesting. So you are sort of the one overseeing everything, making sure everything's working smoothly, there to, as you said, sort of put out fires if anything needs, uh, needs help. That's um, probably somebody that people don't even think about existing, that once you say it, I'm like, well, of course somebody has to be doing that. And uh, I can see how you would be perfect for that, um, given who you are, the job you have, and like you're, you're very good at organizing and managing people, I'm sure. Well, I, I hope so. Uh, our office is, uh, runs rather smoothly after 25 years, I would hope it would. Um, but uh, we, uh, it, it's, it's really um, a great role to have. You know, I get to work with some great people like Dr. Tim Lotzenheiser and, and the folks who uh, run uh, TNP, the judges and, and the event staff and the volunteers from the school. And it's just a fun day for me. I just have a great time. 
Well, I love that you're doing that. So you mentioned helping directors relax. I think that that's key, especially if they're maybe new to the Bands of America scene. So what are some of the things that you do to try to help them sort of breathe and calm down as they're starting? Well, I, I, I try to explain to them that, that there is never going to be a problem that they're going to encounter that we can't solve, uh, that they don't need to worry about that. I'll give you an example. We had a brand new band from uh, in, in, I believe it was Midland, Texas, that had never been to a BOA show before. They were from Colorado. Uh, it took them multiple hours to get there. They had an incident with, I believe, their equipment truck that broke down. Well, we're gonna, you know, that director's then gonna come to that check-in highly tense. And we're gonna try to arc that down just a little bit so that they can go back to their students and be relaxed. So there's no problem we can't overcome. We have breaks built in. We'll just move your band from, from the slot you're normally in until uh, one of those breaks so that your equipment truck can get here. So there's no pressure. Just relax, get out there and do the things that you know how to do with your kids. And interestingly enough, they won their division at that show. And it was totally awesome for a first time band to be able to win their division uh, in, at that show. Absolutely. That's one of those bands that everybody was talking about that we actually talked about on our Marching Arts Now show because they, they were that was a great story. And right. I love that you're talking about um, keeping everybody calm. I think that's one of the hallmarks of Bands of America events is that they're just everybody knows they're run like clockwork. There's sort of this calmness and organization to it that when I talked to Debbie Laffrey, she said, you know, this helps the directors and staff. They know exactly what to expect. They can just concentrate on what they're doing and their show. Um, you know, Barry, I've been, I was a band director. I've been to shows where it was chaos and that's very distracting when you want to do focus on what you're doing. So I think that's a real service that you and others like you are providing to sort of keep that even keel. I agree. And, and you know, Tim, I was, I was a director too. And I, I was young when I was a director. And back in those days, we didn't have assistants. We didn't have staff. It was whoever I could get to volunteer to come help. And it was myself and and, you know, I'm I'm doing the bus list. I'm doing this. So everything to move that band down the road was my responsibility. And so, you know, you can you can take that pressure, especially as a young person and and then meet that out to the kids. And you never want that to happen. You want the kids experience to be totally relaxed and all of that. And so I try to I try to do that with the directors to make sure that they're they're giving their best to those students who are gonna give their best to the audience. And that's what we all want. Absolutely, our whole goal is for those students to have a great experience, to have a great performance, to do their best. So uh, I just think it's, I like talking to folks like yourself who are in these roles because I think you're sort of the ones making that possible that we don't think about. And I guess if you do your job correctly, nobody should think about you. Exactly. And, and, you know, I, I, I shouldn't be in the way, but I should be there to be able to um, um, make sure that uh, it, it is a seamless experience for them. It's interesting. I was talking to Susan Smith, who is going to be the contest director at Jacksonville State University this week. And, and this will be, I believe, her first time in that role. She's done many roles for uh, Music for All and Bands of America over the years, but her first time alone in that contest director role. And so we were sort of talking back and forth about how, what I do and, and what she did. And she gave me an excellent suggestion. And that's get the, get the telephone numbers of the directors before the show, send out my contact information to them. So they've got that and they can answer those questions. I can answer those questions before they even get to the, the show. So I'm going to take that from Susan and moving forward just to make sure that the directors have all the resources they need. That's really smart. I mean, of course, Susan is really smart, but that's a Absolutely. really smart idea because imagine I'm that director and my equipment truck has just broken down. I want to be able to reach out and let you know and get some help. So that's that's a really great idea. You know, you've been doing this a long time with Bands of America. Why do you stay involved after all this time? Well, I, I like to tell people it, in in my current role. Um, here's a little history lesson about prosecution in Georgia that most people probably don't want to know. But we have two levels of prosecution. We have a district attorney uh, who prosecutes the bad people who do really bad things. And we have a solicitor general who prosecutes our neighbors for things like traffic citations and, and misdemeanor offenses. So 
we're we're not we're not really dealing with criminals like my brethren who are district attorneys. But one of the things that our office is allowed to do is we get very young prosecutors in who it's their first job and they're, they're baby lawyers, and I get to teach them. I get to teach them how to be a lawyer. So I, I still do that. But what I like to say to folks is that, you know, the job, the, the lawyer job pays the bills, but music feeds my soul. And I get so much more out of participating with Bands of America and Music for All um, because of what it gives me. I mean, I, to be able to see these incredible performances, to see students overcoming adversity, to, to be able to see what they produce, especially in, I call it the thousand year plague that we've had, and now we've got two years uh, uh, worth of not having those experiences. I so appreciate the performances that we're getting now because it it does it absolutely feeds my soul i've had a blast at the shows i've done so far this year and i can't wait until the next one uh, uh that's coming up in indianapolis next week i think that's wonderful you know you're a great example of someone who was very musical that was very invited in fact music was your profession for a while and then even though you moved into another thing in your life you found a way to still keep that musical connection and have that outlet. And I just wanna encourage everybody to do that. There's community bands, there's volunteering at your local school, or, or like you said, with Bands of America or any kind of group. I love that you're a great example of sort of how to keep that part of yourself, um, you know, fed and growing and feeling good. Well, it started years ago. Since 1992, I've done, um, uh, legal seminars for music teachers, both with our state association and, and several others across the United States. And a couple of years ago, Robert Smith and David Starnes and I got together and did a, uh, a seminar on copyright from a, from a composer publisher's uh, perspective, from a teacher's perspective, and from a lawyer's perspective. And we were blessed to be able to give that to the uh, Midwest uh, Convention. Uh, several years ago, and we had a packed house. So music has given me so many things in my life that I want to make sure that I'm giving back to the profession that uh, that that has done that for me and so many other people um, here in this country and across the world. Well, I think it's wonderful. And, you know, volunteering in any way is really good for all of us. It You know, anytime I do that, I know that it just, I feel like I'm making a difference. I'm doing something to help somebody else. Um, so I love that you're doing that on such a high level, of course. This is wonderful. I thank you for bringing your expertise sort of to this, you know, because clearly you have the expertise in your work and you're bringing it to be one of those cogs in the Bands of America machine that just makes it run like clockwork. So I thank you for doing that. Absolutely. I, like I say, I, I get more out of it than I think I give, but uh, I'm blessed to be able to do that. Uh, I'm I'm in my second um uh, term on the board of directors and that has been such a blessing to me as well to be able to to serve in that capacity too well thank you for doing all of that and thanks for talking to me today this was really interesting thanks for all the great work that you do and uh, everybody watching when you are at the contest and you see it running like clockwork think about people like barry who are behind the scenes making it happen barry thanks for talking this was great absolutely thank you tim